So I decided to do my research on polyneuritis equi. Um, just a little backstory as to why I decided to do that. Actually, one of my really good friends from back where I'm from had a horse that was showing symptoms and it kind of looked like something else, but the vets actually determined that this was it. And I know absolutely nothing about it. And I've been in horses for probably 10 years mm -hmm. and seeing as that I've never heard of it, I kind of figured I should do some research and I plan to stay in horses for a while. So I thought it'd be worth my time to do some research on it. Mm -hmm. So the definition, breaking it down, poly means many, neuro means nerve, and itis is the inflammation of. So it translates to the inflammation of many nerves. So what exactly is happening? The cause is actually not 100% sure what's going on, but they have think, or like they think that um, it's a progressive immune mediated lymph lymphocytic infiltration and demyelination of the sarcococcygeal and lumbrosacral nerve roots of the cauda equina. And this is um, attacking the insulation of the nerves. So the myelin proteins that are protecting the nerves are actually getting attacked. And just so you can understand a little bit about more what it's saying, the lymphatic infiltration is the infiltration of white blood cells and the demyelination is damage to the protective covering that surrounds the nerve fibers. So like I was saying earlier about the myelin proteins being attacked. And then cauda equine is, just means horse tail. Um, I've put a couple pictures up here for everyone who's looking to kind of get an idea of where everything's at. So I put this up here so you can kind of realize that like this is the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, and then what's going on is going on back through here. So it's back in like, back in their head, back in their tail region. And this is just another like zoomed in actual x-ray picture that gives you an idea of what's going on. So it's back, back through here that they're having issues. I couldn't find any pictures that had the lumbrosacral and the sarcococcygeal picture together. So I just circled the one on this one in the cauda equina so you can get an idea of where it's kind of talking about. And this was the only one that I could find the sarcogeal joint at. So you can kind of see where it's talking about the joints through here. So your nerve's going to be in there and then your lumbosacral is through here and it's happening to this as well. And that's going to be back, like I said, back through here. And this is another picture that I had found. It gives you a general idea of there's the sacral coccygeal through here, and then your cauda equina is in through here. So it kind of puts it both together so you can see how it attaches and see how close it is and get a better idea of where everything's at. And then this picture shows one that actually has polyneuritis and one that's a normal one. So A is the normal one. As you can see, there's a lot more blood flow. It looks more lively, really. Um, you can tell it doesn't really have very much damage. But if you look at B, there's not much blood flow. It just looks like nothing, nothing was happening there. There's obviously a big difference in the two pictures. So the symptoms, I have a video. So we'll talk a little bit about the symptoms. No, a little bit about the symptoms in after we watch this video. Um, so what's going on here is you can see something's wrong in his hind end. Um, back through here, he's not walking really, really right. He's kind of walking a little stiff, like he's not really sure what's going on. And it just looks like he hurts, like he doesn't want to be doing that, like he doesn't want to be moving. And then here it is, the vet's looking, checking his face. You can see his ear. There's nothing there. He can't feel anything. You can see in his eye. There's a better view of it a little bit later, but as right there, you can see there's not much. Not much going on, not much responsiveness. And then his lip, obviously that's 
not normal for a horse. So there's obviously some nerve damage going on right there. He'll show you the other side like he's doing right now of what it should look like. And then see, he can't really feel that. He feels the one side, but he doesn't feel the other side. You can see in, kind of right there, you can see his eye a little bit. He just doesn't, he doesn't look like he feels good. He doesn't look like a normal horse. He doesn't look excited or happy or really no emotion is going on. And then this I found really interesting is another one of the symptoms is paralysis of the penis, which is he's showing when he grabs a hold of it like that. I mean, obviously no normal horse is just going to stand there and accept that because he's doing it pretty hard. And you can show the farther up he goes, he still has feeling up there, but down there there's obviously no feeling whatsoever or else the vet would probably be dead. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and he shows you it on the other side too. He goes up higher to show you that obviously the horse can feel that. He's getting irritated, but he goes back down farther and grabs a hold of it and it's he still doesn't really feel it. Yeah, so he can't feel it on that side either right there. Or <clears throat> and then another one of the symptoms is paralysis of the rectum as well. And he's just kind of showing you that he can't, he's not feeling any of that. He's, yeah, he can't feel it. And he pushes along over here, and once he gets to about here, the horse moves, and you can tell like what he's doing right there. The horse can feel it out to about here, but before that, he, he really can't. All the nerves are all damaged, and he just can't feel that. So there are classical symptoms, and those include the ones that involve the sacral and coccygeal nerves. And this leads to the paralysis of the rectum, the tail, and the bladder, and the penis as well, which is what was shown in the video. And then there's also atypical symptoms. Um, those include or involve the cranial nerves, so the nerves that exit the skull above the cervical vertebrae. And it's actually possible that they display both of them. And that includes like behavior changes, ataxia, which is the lack of coordination during voluntary movements, awkward gaits, urine scalding of the hind end, and muscle atrophy. And then this shows the urine scalding right here. And then that's the issues with the muscle degrading through here. And so I put this picture back up here so you can kind of just remember what I was talking about earlier. So the diagnosis is that it's actually a very uncommon issue. And so the diagnosis has to be made for mortem. You can't do it when they're still living. And you can tell from picture A and B, it's, it's pretty obvious once you do the postmortem examination. But like if you're gonna diagnose a horse that's still living, you're not just gonna kill it just to figure out that that's going on. And it's just the firm thickening of the multiple nerve roots, which you can see up there. Up through here, all of those are hardened. It just doesn't look like a normal one. And a big thing with this disease is that it's often or mistaken for other diseases like EPM. And so sometimes it goes like undiagnosed for quite a while or they're treating the wrong disease which obviously isn't gonna help slow down this one. And then the only test that they can really do is the ELISA test, and that just detects the antibodies against the P2 myelin proteins. And this test isn't specific to this disease, and it's not commercially available, so many vets actually don't use this very often. So there are no treatments for this disease, um, they have like supportive care and they suggest that you can use vitamin E or supplement it to your horses just because it's a nerve protectant vitamin and it may slow the progression. It may or may not. It just depends on your horse. 
and the other supportive care are just treating the urine scalding and giving them painkillers, giving them muscle relaxers. Um, progression of this disease can be slow. In particular, horses with principally cranial nerve signs may be maintained for a long time, but in the end, they're gonna be euthanized and some of them have to be euthanized within a few months. It just depends on your horse and what's going on. And if you really wanna treat and deal with like the urine scalding because that's really difficult to deal with, especially in the winter, you have to go out and hose them down and it's just a lot to deal with for one person. And then these are my sources that I used. In that, I'm gonna make sure we mention the video, <coughs> the Cornell video that was very good that you showed. I wanna make sure, I know it said Cornell on the video too, so 